Okay, we will discuss today about these linear adaptive filters. <coughs> Before this, we were discussing about the vinyl filters. So in the vinyl filters, we have a problem that you give some input sequence to a linear filter with some filter weights which generates the output sequence using the linear convolution and then you have a desired response or a desired sequence and you find the difference between these two which we call as the error sequence okay so the problem was to find a solution for the filter weights which minimizes the mean square error okay so we define a cost function j which was the mean square error okay and we find a solution for that okay so we got the equation which is called as one and half equations which is R W O is equal to P. So this equation gives you the Weiner filter solution. Okay. So where R and W and P all are basically vectors. So R is the autocorrelation matrix for the input data, and P is the cross correlation matrix between U N and D N, and W O. Is the set of or is the column vector of optimum filter weights? Okay, so if we solve this equation, you get W O, which gives you the solution for the one filter. Okay. And then we have seen that okay, so this J in general is basically a second order function of the filter coefficients. So in general, if you plot this function j with respect to the filter weights suppose for two weights w0 and w1 so you get a two dimension a surface with a unique minima okay this is basically the solution of this one and equation it means this wo vector that is it will contain two filter weights w0 and w1 so these are the points where the mean scalar will be minimum. Okay, this is what we do in the winner filter. Okay. So in order to apply this winner filter, you must have the idea about the correlation and the cross correlation matrix. Okay. Or if there is a possibility that if the signal statistics they change with time, it means your R and P if they are not fixed if they are time varying in that case this optimum point will also shift so this point may go from here to here then the surface will change after some time it, it may go from here to here it means every time your optimum solution is changing okay so in that case you cannot rely on this vinyl filter okay so if the statistics or the environment is changing with the signal characteristics they change with time so binary filter is not a good solution if it is a stationary environment statistics of the signal they are not changing with time you can apply binary filter if you know the correlation and the cross correlation matrices you can directly find the solution where the array is going to be minimum in the mean scale sense if the statistics of the filter they are changing with time so you can go for adaptive filters okay in adaptive filters what you have you have again an input sequence or signal to a filter now the filter coefficients for this filter they are not fixed in fact they vary with time so w0 w1 w2 and so on they are all a function of n, time varying. Okay, 
and similarly for any particular time this filter will generate the output sequence yn so we assume that the filter is linear okay the filter is linear and time in that case this output can be directly find using the convolution and then <coughs> you have a desired response here again desired sequence d so you again compute the errors which is the difference between dn and yn at any particular instant of time n and instead of using the minor hope equations for finding the optimum solution we use a recursive mechanism to update the filter coefficients in time okay so this error signal is basically used or it is feedback to a algorithm which we call as weight updation mechanism or adaptive control algorithm whatever it say so there is a algorithm for weight adjustment okay so there is a adaptive control mechanism which is basically used to change these filter weights okay this is how adaptive filter is different from the minor filter or in fact from the normal filters in the normal filters it is a one direction one directional you can say so you have some input you apply it to a filter you get a output so this is a digital filter so it can be either a finite impulse response or it can be a infinite impulse response filter okay so these filters they are generally designed using some frequency response criteria okay so you have impulse response and correspondingly you have frequency response so it may be a low pass filter so if it is a low pass filter okay you have a spectrum like this so between pi to minus pi so from 0 to mega say <coughs> this response is one okay so it is a low pass filter so generally when we use filters for filtering these signals so we must know what is the spectrum of signal okay or what is the spectrum which you want to pass process so once you have a spectrum based on that frequency response we design a filter either using a finite impulse response or a infinite impulse response so then if you apply any input to this filter it will generate a filtered output okay depending upon the frequency response of this filter this is how normally filters are designed okay we start from the frequency domain and then we design the filter in the time domain or you calculate the impulse response but in this case in case of adaptive filters you are applying some input to a filter whose filter weights they are not fixed it means it is not designed based on some frequency response criteria okay the filter weights they are not fixed they are time varying so at any particular instant of time depending upon what are the filter weights at that time this filter will generate a output y n and you have a desired response so the difference between the two is computed and that is given as feedback to adaptive control mechanism to adjust these filter weights okay so this algorithm it goes on updating these weights with the objective that the mean square error is minimized after each iteration okay it means finally after many iterations when this filter converges the solution of adaptive filter will be same as the winer filter solution okay so it will be like this suppose if you take a adaptive filter with two weights w0 and w1 and you have some error performance surface in the winer filter so you don't know initially okay where the optimum solution will lie so you can start from any point okay so w0 and w1 which are the filter weights 
they can be set to any particular value so initially if you don't have any guess about this optimum point so you can simply set it to a null vector vector zero okay so then if you apply some input sequence here you compute the output then a desired response is available to you you find the difference between two you get the error now depending upon that error that is given feedback to this adaptive control mechanism this will again change the filter weight set next time okay so that the error is minimized in the means questions it means if you start suppose from here any point here and your optimum point is here okay so this filter will track the surface so after many iterations it will approach it like this okay so we set these weights to any initial value depending upon if you have some guess about this optimum point if you don't have any guess you can arbitrarily set these weights to zero or to any other vector okay then with the passage of time as these weights are up updated this point will move towards this optimum point so after many iterations you will finally reach at a point which is the vinyl filter solution okay and if the signals they are time varying so in that case this optimum point may change so accordingly since the active filter is self learning filter it is a self learning capability okay so if there is any error means suppose it has minimized the mean square error it has reached the solution on the final point so after some time if there is some turbulence in the system it will cause again this error to increase if the error will increase it will again be given feedback to this algorithm it will again change the filter weights it will again adjust its filter weights to get the new solution and so on okay so adaptive filters they can basically track the variations in the input signal okay which cannot be known by the winner filters so this is how adaptive filters are basically used okay so you have a filtering process and then a weight updation mechanism so there are two processes which are going simultaneously in the adaptive filters so input to a filter with time varying coefficients so then we estimate this output with a desired response the difference between two gives you an error signal this error signal is given feedback to a control mechanism which is used to update these filter weights this is a general structure of an adaptive filter okay and adaptive filters now see in this control mechanism we use many algorithms for updating these filter weights so the most generally used algorithm is the least mean square algorithm which we call as lms algorithm okay. we may also use here steepest method of steepest descent in fact we will start from the method of steepest descent and then we will finally land at this lms algorithm which is basically practical way to update these uh, filters weights okay then there is also one more that is called as rls recursive least scarce algorithm okay so how you choose the algorithm or how you choose whether this filter is fir or ir okay so there are many criteria for that maybe suppose one criteria is that how this filter tracks the variations in the input signals okay changes in the input tracking capability another maybe it's what you can say misadjustment 
Okay, misadjustment means that if you have the vinyl filter solution here, so the steady state solution that you obtain after the adaptive filter, how it basically differs from the ideal solution. Okay, stability of this filter that is also an issue because there is a feedback due to this feedback, the system become, can become unstable. That we will see when we will study detail these algorithms how you can control the stability of these methods okay then there may be robust uh, robustness then there may be the computational requirements okay so so many factors are there the learning curve okay but after how many iterations see as you go on increasing n so this mean square error will basically minimize so after many iterations it will reach to the minimum value and then it will remain constant here so this is my optimum point so how many iterations are basically required to reach to this optimum point that may be a criteria okay. the num the computational complexity that is the how this uh, filter is implemented in hardware or maybe in software how many multiplications and additions delays address they are required to implement so this they, those can be different factors okay for choosing a particular algorithm for using these for updating these filter weights okay so before we discuss these weight updation mechanisms we will discuss some general structures where adaptive filters are used or their applications in fact broad applications one is it is used in uh, system identification So in the system identification means you have some unknown system okay and you want to model this system using a filter and you try to find out the response of the system okay so how you can do this using adaptive filter so you apply some input to a unknown plant This is some unknown plant which you want to model using a filter or you, can, you want to try to find the response of this unknown plant or unknown system okay so in order to find this response of this unknown plant if you use adaptive filter how you can use it you can apply the same input which you are giving to the plant the same input to a adaptive filter And then the output of this adaptive filter can be given as desired response. And the output of this plant is your yn. This is dn. So the difference between two will generate you a error sequence cn. And this error sequence is now feedback to this weight adjustment mechanisms. Let us pull a simple LMS algorithm. So this will change this filter weights okay so with the passage of time what this adaptive filter will do it will minimize the mean skid errors okay and then it will finally converge to a stable point which is the minor solution so what it means now since the input to the plant and the adaptive filter that is same and if the error is minimized in the mean skid sense it means the output of this plant is the same as the output of this filter okay so this is how this model this plant is basically modeled using a filter so this filter has no time varying coefficients okay so this plant or this system may be modeled using a suppose we have 21 uh, tape of air filters okay or 11 tape of air filters so you have 21 filter coefficients here so you give some input signal to both the plant and this adaptive filter and this will change its filter weights till the error gets minimized. So when the error gets minimized it means at that point your output of the plant and the output of the adaptive filter they will be very close to each other. So this plant can be approximated or this can be modeled using this filter. 
So the response of this filter will be equivalent to the response of this model in that case. This is how this adaptive filters they are used in system identification. Okay. Then you may use these for inverse modeling. Inverse inverse modeling. Inverse modeling, what we do with the inverse modeling? We create a model and that is the inverse of the system basically. Okay. And how we do that? Again, you have some input, you give it to a system, unknown system or we say unknown plant and the output of this is now given to a adaptive filter. This gives you the response yn and then you must have some response dn also. So dn is basically the this. Whatever input you are going applying to this plant, the same input is applied to the adaptive filter as a desired response. Or in sometimes we use in between here a delay. Or in some cases we give this input directly to this adaptive filter without a delay. And then you find again the error signal and then this goes to this adaptive algorithm. And this adaptive algorithm will change again the filter weights. Okay, to minimize the mean square error. Now what will happen in this case? Since the desired response is the same, whatever is given as input to this. Okay, and when the error is going to be minimized, it means yn will be a close approximate of dn. Or for the ideal case, your yn and dn they will be exactly same and your en will be zero. So if yn is approximated to dn, it means these two systems, they are the inverse of each other. Okay. And in terms of the frequency response, you can say, okay, that if the plant has a response such of z, the adaptive filter will have a response one upon h of z. So this is the inverse of this. So that when the two are put in cascade, the net effect is identity system. So whatever you are getting input here, the same we are getting at the output. Isn't it? So then in this case, this adaptive filter is basically creating a model which is the inverse of this plant. Okay. So if the plant is time varying, its response will change. According to the adaptive filter will change its response. Okay. According to the response of this plant so that at any point of time, these two, they form a inverse system of each other. This is how adaptive filters, they are using channel equalization that we already discussed also in manual filtering. So this plant in that case is a communication channel. Okay. So whatever input you are giving or you are passing to the channel, the same input is basically available to the receiver at the same time. Or the receiver and the transmitter, they are synchronized with each other. Okay, and that is generally done using a PN sequence. So a PN sequence is stored in the receiver, which is synchronized with the PN sequence at the transmitter. So before transmitting the actual data, the transmitter transmits the PN sequence, which is known to the receiver. So during that time, which is called the learning period. Okay. This adaptive filter will learn the characteristics of the channel and it will adapt its filter coefficients so that it will create inverse model of this communication channel. So that the effect of intersimal interference is minimized. Okay. This is what is inverse modeling. Then you can use adaptive filters for linear prediction also. So there is a difference between the filtering and the prediction. Okay. In the filtering means we have some information or some data up to some time t, some time t, 
and you want to process this or you want to collect some information from that data which is available up to some time in the prediction what we do that you want to get the information about some data at a time t plus tau where tau is greater than zero based on the data which is available up to time t only okay it means based on the previous history of the data or the previous data you are predicting that okay what will be the future after some time tau this is what is prediction okay it is the forecasting problem in signal processing basically so you have collected some information and data up to some time t and based on that data you are predicting that what will be that trend in that signal at a time t plus tau okay so how that is how that can be done using this adaptive filters so you again apply some input sequence and you now delay it you, you apply it to a delay unit the output of this is given to this adaptive filter yn and the desired response to this dn is the same input but without any delay okay and then again you find this error and you feed back this error to this adaptive algorithm to change this filter weights okay so what this will do now since you are applying this input to a delay element so this input data will be delayed by some time before it goes to this adaptive filter but the same input data is given to this filter as a desired response okay it means whatever this output will compute it is not based upon the present data it is based upon the previous data since you have used a delay element here okay so based on the previous data depending upon how many delays you, you have used in this structure it will generate the estimate of the desired response that is the present input and since it is minimizing it so it will generate a estimate of the desired response or the present input based on the previous inputs in the mean square sense this is what is linear prediction okay and then finally you have <coughs> noise cancellation or interference cancellation so this we have i think discussed previously also so you have input to a adaptive filter in this case which is noise and the desired response to this filter is your information signal plus noise and then you again compute this error and feedback this to this adaptive algorithm to change its filter weights okay so what the adaptive filter basically does here it cancels the noise component from the signal and in your error signal your signal part is basically left and see in this case we assume that okay the signal and the noise in the input they are uncorrelated and the noise to this filter input and the noise to this desired response they are somehow correlated okay so it acts basically correlation canceller so those components which are correlated they are cancelled by the adaptive filters okay so this is used in many applications we have discussed earlier also in fighter jets okay for communication between pilot to pilot or for communication between the pilot to the air traffic control on the ground we use these models for interference cancellation in biomedical processing we use it for noise cancellation like if your ecg signal is corrupted with power line interference which is a pure sinusoid wave of suppose 50 hertz or 60 hertz 
So to cancel that, you can use an empty filter. So you can apply here simply 50 Hz noise. And this signal will be your ECG plus 50 Hz noise. So what will be left in the error signal is your clean ECG. Okay. Or it can be used for this fetal electrocardiography also. So you have here MECG, maternal ECG. And here we give only the noise in part, which is the chest ECG. So this M's ECG is basically a combination of, or we say it is an abdominal ECG, in fact, ECG, which is mother ECG plus fetus ECG signal. So this chest ECG and this mother ECG, you now they are from the, they are basically both ECG of the mother. So they are correlated, so they are cancelled out error signal you will get only the fetal ECG okay so how accurately it is cancelled and why is cancelled so that depends upon the type of the signal that you have okay it is not like that exactly you these two components will be cancelled and you will get only fetal ECG at no okay but anyhow we basically try to improve the signal to noise ratio what you can see okay so these are the various models of applications where adaptive filters are used in system identification then in your inverse modeling linear prediction and noise cancellation okay so next we will discuss this method of steepest descent and its stability and then we will go to this lms algorithm and then we will discuss maybe some applications the practical applications of this lms algorithm or adaptive filters